Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, would want only the best across Germany to become part of his group of elite paramilitary officers. The SS would be responsible for the concentration camps, but Himmler himself wanted obedience, respect, but he would not tolerate any weakness at all. But what is not as well known is that the Reichsfuhrer SS would himself have a significant issue as the Second World War came to an end. He would, at the end of the war, try to broker peace with the Allies, and Hitler would be furious when he heard of this. He would strip Himmler of all his jobs and power, but Himmler had a secret that he was harbouring from a Nazi dictator, and months before he'd checked into a sanatorium, as he was having a mental breakdown. But what is the story of the madness of Heinrich Himmler? To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. For some reason, Adolf Hitler seemed to keep Heinrich Himmler away from the leadership of the army for a significant amount of time. Heinrich Himmler was anything but a military general, but Hitler would make him an army group commander twice, and both times he would fail in this. He was thrust into the dying embers of the Second World War in Europe, as in December 1944, he was made the commander of the army group Upper Rhine. His soldiers were responsible for defending the Rhine in the Alsace-Lorraine area. The army group would later, in January 1945, launch Operation Northwind, the final major offensive in Western Europe for the Germans. The intention was to ease the pressure for the retreating divisions who were leaving the front line from the Ardennes offensive, but it did not work out and it did fail. Himmler was not in charge of the planning of the offensive, and he was not in particular involved with the execution of the operation. His failures in this were largely ignored, as Hitler would then thrust Himmler into the heart of the Eastern Front. In late January 1945, he was appointed the commander of Army Group Vistula. Now this was a very high profile and pressure job for Himmler, as he was in control of the Army Group, which was put together from elements of Army Group A, from the failed and battered Soviet Vistula Erder Offensive, Army Group Center, which had been battered in the East Prussian Offensive, and a number of new formations and mackled together soldiers. It was formed to protect Berlin and the German capital from the Soviet armies who were advancing from the Vistula River. Himmler had a complete lack of understanding of military tactics, and during one formation he formed soldiers near to Danzig, and instead of running a line which went north to south to fight the Russians from the east, he formed an east to west line. Over 500,000 soldiers were part of Army Group Vistula, and this was a huge job for Heinrich Himmler. It was his job to defend the heart of the Nazi regime and Hitler's capital from the Soviets. He would establish his headquarters on a special train known as the Steiermark, and he would not leave this. It was based at the Deutsche Krona, and he would run most of his life from this train. The train was not fitted with the equipment needed for a military commander, and Himmler's orders rarely made it to the front line. He never also went to the front line to meet his soldiers, and it was clear at this time in the war that for Himmler things were going rather badly. The advancing Russian soldiers would ignore the defensive setup of the inept Himmler, and because of this they battered the German soldiers and went south towards Berlin. Heinz Guderian would visit Himmler to speak about the military failings, but when he got there he caught Himmler who had a cold and was feeling very sick. He was a man who at this point was working only four hours a day, and he must have known that the German war effort was failing. He himself was completely failing as a military commander, and Heinz Guderian would then request someone else take control of an operation, with Himmler relieved of command. Himmler at the time was falling from grace, and he was under a great deal of pressure, and he knew that Hitler's relationship with him was getting rather strained. Himmler's mental health and physical health was also deteriorating, and he was struggling to cope with the stress, and the fact he was being seen as a failure. Himmler became very anxious, and he was not in the right frame of mind to give decent reports to Hitler, and this was in the final months of the war. Hitler himself was inside of his bunker, and was planning a final battle, which he believed would lead to Germany's victory, smashing the onslaughts of the Soviet Red Army. But when the counter-attacks were failing to stop the Soviets heading towards Berlin, Hitler would completely turn on Himmler, and he accused him of desertion, and with this on the 20th of March 1945, Hitler replaced Himmler with Gotthard Hariki as a commander-in-chief of Army Group Vistula on the Eastern Front. But Himmler then went on the run, and he claimed that he was ill, 
and a week before this he had abandoned his position and post, and he retired to a sanatorium. He was under the care of his doctor, Carl Gebhardt, and Himmler, the mighty head of the SS, was now inside Hohenlinchen's sanatorium. This was a site where many SS doctors worked and conducted medical experiments, and here was Himmler inside of a place which was for recovering soldiers to rest up and recover. Hohenlinchen was a site where many SS soldiers would go to recover from the tribulations of the front line, and they would recover from conditions such as shell shock, and also wounds they would have sustained in battle. Gebhardt would establish some shocking experiments there, involving different patients whose limbs were deliberately broken, and it was a barbaric sight, and the horrors of the hospital would later result in Gebhardt being sentenced to death. Whilst here, Himmler would escape from the war effort, and he would sign one agreement on the 12th of March 1945, whilst inside the sanatorium. He signed a secret document stating that when the Allies approached, that the concentration camps would not be destroyed, and that white flags would be flown over the camps that would be handed over to the Allies, and he also promised that the killings would stop, and that inmates would not be evacuated. The agreement signed between Himmler and his physician Felix Kirsten saved 60,000 lives. Himmler during the war, especially in the final days, would try to save his own skin a number of times, and he tried to portray himself as a hero who would try and save the lives of many, despite the SS, his organisation, being the perpetrators of the Holocaust, who were responsible for the deaths of six million. But inside of the sanatorium, Himmler would also be resting, and it's claimed that he was on the verge of a breakdown, but he would, whilst here, plot to usurp Hitler, and to begin to plan peace talks with the Allies. He tried to negotiate a separate peace with the Western Allies to save his skin, but this failed, and then in the final moments of the war, Himmler would go on the run, before he was captured by the British Army, and he would then take his life inside of captivity, under rather strange circumstances. But inside of Hohenlinchen sanatorium, Heinrich Himmler was said to have been recovering, because of the fact he was struggling with the effects of being made a commander. He was a man who was not a military officer, and he had never really had any experience in the military. To give him command of the struggling war effort was a strange decision by Adolf Hitler, and it was clear Himmler could not hack the stresses of military command. He would have a full breakdown, and he would check into the medical facility as he claimed he was ill, but he then was deemed a burden to Germany by high-ranking field marshals at the end of the Second World War. What was shocking is that it was only 96 days from when Himmler was appointed the commander of Army Group Vistula to the day that Hitler died inside of the bunker, and then eight days later Germany would surrender. What was also strange was that Hitler decided to give Himmler another chance, despite the fact he was from very early on a complete failure with regards to military leadership matters. But Himmler's breakdown and fleeing to a sanatorium was a shocking and feeble act for one of history's most evil men. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.